Hey guys, rating climb from 1200 to 1400. Now for this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. One of my subscribers who's been around for a while actually asked about the King's Indian defense. And so just for this rating climb, uh, I'm gonna be playing only the King's Indian defense. If I'm white, if I'm black, I should be able to figure out a way to play it even you know, as black against E4, you can kind of go from the perk into the King's Indian defense, I think. So I'm gonna try to play it regardless of what color I am, uh, just because they requested it and so blah, blah. This one is for you. Um, hopefully I can still win. Um, I don't normally play the King's Indian defense, so I don't have a ton of theory. I know like the very basics, um, so it should be interesting to see how these games turn out, but let's get started. All right, here we go. We are black, 10 minute game. 14-14, so he's just outside of the range, but pretty close. And he plays d4, so this will be perfect. We can just go right into it. So, g6, bishop g7, and then d6. That's about that's about as where where my knowledge of the king's Indian defense ends. Um, I know that you do this, and then I think you castle, and then try to play e5 or c5 at some point. So. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm not sure if you're supposed to leave the bishop back or put it out there. I'll just leave it for now and go this way. I really don't know. So maybe rook e1 and rook e, or rook e8 and e, e5 makes sense. Yeah, let's do that. So if I play e5 and he takes me, I can take back with a knight or a pawn, potentially push here later, maybe. I'm putting myself into a pin. Knight can come in. I don't think that's a big deal. It's pretty well defended. I could also play something like c6, a6, b5. This is where, like, actually knowing what the theory is would probably help. Like, I could even play c5. I don't really know. So I'm just going to go with, with e5 and see what happens. Trying to break open the center while this king is still there, I guess, is the idea. And now... If I take with the knight, am I going to get in trouble with this pin? Like, knight to d5? I don't think so. I've got it defended well enough. Worst case, I can play h6 and g5 if I had to. But I could just take with the pawn and then maybe play like a5 and try to get my knight over here. If I take with the knight, it lets the bishop out. Hmm. I'm expecting he might castle queenside and put the rook here at some point. Where's my queen gonna go? So takes, takes, let's say takes, castles. Queen could go there, but then it's kind of awkward. So maybe I'll just do this and then play like c6 and let my queen out here. Let's try that. Yeah, so I gotta be careful here that my queen is gonna come under this discovered attack when he moves the bishop. So I think I wanna play c6 just to create some, some options for my queen. And then I can get out of this pin too. So I'll play c6. It does create a weakness here that I have to be careful about, but I think it's okay. And I think I would have liked this bishop to have been on g4. I think it would have been, uh, sorry. I think it would have been easier to play, but. All right, so here's the pin. Um, I think we just move the queen somewhere, maybe queen c7, and then we've got this defended twice, so we don't have to worry about that. It also gets out of any discovered attacks. So yeah, let's do that. And it keeps control of this, this square, so he can't go there right now. Although he could play c5, which kind of looks like a pretty good move. Okay, so... Um, I don't, I really don't like this bishop. So I need to trade some pieces to 
kind of free up the position. So as a general rule, if you're really cramped, trading pieces is usually a good thing. So here's one option. And I'm actually wondering if I can win a piece by playing F5 after that, F5 and then E4, forking the pieces. It looks like I'm just winning a piece by doing that. Takes, takes, F5, E4. So now I'm just checking like, am I making any mistakes? Am I missing anything? The reason it's gonna win a piece is because after F5, he has to go back, E4, yeah, I don't see anything. So I'm gonna just do that. Take it. Then I'm gonna play here. You know what, I could even play F6 and then win this piece. That looks like it's trapped also. So, um, F6, the bishop's trapped. F5, he's got to go back, and then E4. So, I think I'm going to go with F5 and E4, because if I play F6, then he can play, like, H5, and then he's going to have a lot of pressure here, and if the rook gets involved, it could be bad. Even though I'm going to win a piece, like, the knight's going to come in, it's going to be very risky. F5, E4 looks like... By neutralizing this diagonal, sorry, this diagonal, um, it looks safer for me. So I'm going to go that way. So in my video on um, four ways to win pieces in the opening, this is one of them, like a fork on two pieces. And so this is like a little bit more advanced in the sense that you had to kind of set it up like by trading and then playing f5, e4. But it's the same idea, right? Like his bishop's going to be forced to go there and then you can just get the fork. So definitely something to keep in mind. I guess you could just take here and get two pieces for the, or two pawns for the piece. But then I could still play h6 and this, this bishop is like still trapped, I guess. Gotta be a little careful if that happens because the queen knight combo could be, could be pretty good. Although knight f6 looks really strong, lets the bishop out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is correct, um, leaving the bishop there. I mean, it's turning out okay, but it just felt kind of weird. But I guess that's, I guess when you play the King's Indian, sometimes it can be kind of cramped. Okay, so he decided to just give up the piece and then go for an attack over here, which is probably a good plan, um, trying to do something. So I'm thinking if I take and he takes me here, I'm going to take back, or I could even just take the knight and let him take this. h6, I'm not worried about because then the rook is, is not going to be able to get through. I'd probably just drop back or play there. Let's see, takes, 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 queen takes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to deal with uh, some defending, but I mean, I'm going to still take the piece regardless, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It looks like knight f8 or knight f6 is going to be the move. And then that's going to let the queen over to help out. Uh, knight f8 is really strong because it's going to defend all of these weaknesses here. But knight f6 might be an option too to to attack the queen with tempo 
we'll see what he's going to do. If he's going to go for this capture immediately, uh, or if he's going to take back here first. So he does take it right away. So sometimes you can let him capture with the pawn, put your king in the corner, and actually be pretty safe. Now, in this case, it's... I have to be careful because there's a knight that can go there and, and checkmate me. But if I take the knight right now, then there is no knight. This diagonal is controlled by the bishop. So I'd probably be fine. The other move that he could do is take here with the rook. But then I have knight f8. Just going to attack that. Like I said, let's the queen over to defend. That looks a little more risky, but bishop's going to be controlling. Sorry, bishop's going to be controlling. Oh, I just mouse slipped rook f8. Maybe I should learn how to use a mouse before I keep playing chess online. Well, that's a bad move. Um, yeah, see, I, I should have the same position except be up a knight and said I have nothing. Now the knight's going to come like here. That's what happens when you try to draw too many arrows on the board. Anyway, uh, it happens and we got to just do the best we can after like completely wasting a move there. And I took away like the knight f8 square from my, from my knight. It was like really, really bad move. So let's see, how can we recover from this? I guess one thing it does is defend that square so I can maybe put a bishop there. So like knight here is a move, maybe followed by bishop f5. I mean, the, the pawn is fine because it's blocking his rook. The only real threat is if this knight gets here, right? That's, that's checkmate. So that's what I'm concerned about. Like, even if I play here, he could just play knight there, sacrifice his queen, and then checkmate me. I don't know if he's going to see that, but it's definitely a move. Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's see. Knight here. Da, da, da. That's the problem. I got to defend that square somehow. Or do something else to create a space for my king to go to. Hmm. Right here, right there. How do I stop this checkmate? How do I stop the checkmate? Do I sacrifice my rook just so I don't get mated? Maybe I do. It's pretty bad too. Ooh. If I play knight f6, knight h4, do I have any way to cover that square? Queen over, but then... I'm losing my queen. I guess I can just move this rook and then play knight f8. Maybe I have to do that. It's a terrible position to be in. It's really terrible. Okay. Uh, well, it looks to me like that's the only like major threat, right? And so I have to stop that. So I guess I got to move the rook so that I can bring the knight back and control that square. That's the only... It's the only solution I see to that problem. Or sacrificing the rook, but that's not great either. Wow, what a move. So he's probably going to try to go there anyway, and I won't have the knight left to uh, defend it. Hmm. So, if I take with the bishop, he plays knight there. I could do this to create a space for my king. 
still gonna have to sacrifice my rook over there. Do I have any other options? I don't think so, and I'm running out of time, so I just gotta do it. So knight here, he's going there. Probably have to create a space for the king to go to. Unless I want to sacrifice my queen, which I don't. So I'll do this. The idea that now I can at least move there. It's still a bad position because he can get a queen and I have to just take it with my rook and then he can take it. He can also play bishop h6 check. This is why you don't mouse slip. Just don't mouse slip and everything would have been so much easier because this knight would have not been on the board. Right? Remember earlier I was just going to take it. I wouldn't have had to deal with any of these problems. There, there, check. I'd have to take this. Then he can move his bishop anywhere he wants. Or move his knight anywhere he wants. With the just, I mean, it's just, it's so bad. I can hardly, can hardly stand to look at this board right now. But he only has a minute and a half, and this is kind of a complicated position to figure out the best move. So he might mess it up, and I might get a swindle here. Expecting. Okay, bishop there. Have to take it. Only legal move. Yeah, he's playing pretty well. I guess I have to go here. Yeah, he's playing pretty well. Let's see. Can I? Looks like I made it, right? If I go here, it takes. I made it. I'll try this. It's still mate. Yeah. Well, we mouse slipped and lost 30 points. It was a rated game. So let's go back and look at what should have happened. right here <laughs> so instead of instead of rook f8 i was going to take this and then let's say he takes here like what happened in the game and play king h8 now he has like no threats whatsoever because the rook can't get through bishop can't really ever do anything there it's controlled queen i mean even if the queen got there i'm going to have like just i can just take it so I'm just up two pieces. I would just probably play something like knight f8, bring this bishop out, and it's pretty easy. So that's what should have happened. Um, but yeah, rook f8 was really bad. Anyway, let's find another game. It happens. I'm not going to take this one out of the recording. I'm going to leave it in just because it's part of chess. Sometimes stuff like that happens, and you got to move on. All right, we got another game where white, so I will play knight f3 to just do the king's Indian attack. Basically the same thing, except do it from white's perspective. I'm a little bit tilted from the last game, so if I move quicker, that could be why. All right, so I'm just going to bring the bishop out and probably trade it off because I didn't like last time how the position was so cramped. Yeah, so I'm just going to trade that off and go f go forward from here. Um, so I'm thinking about playing queen b3. Not sure that it does a whole lot. I want to play e4 and open up the center. Um, maybe. Or expand on the queen side. Pressure over there. Because he captured here and has double pawns, I'm going to have a pawn majority on the queen side. So you can see I have five pawns. You know, he only has four. So maybe that's where I want to kind of try to play at. I think it is. So 
so I'm thinking about playing like d4 and kind of maybe making this bishop not do very much. Issue is that I do create a hole here, like he could play f5, knight here, knight here. So that's something that I'm thinking about. Let me play rook e1, maybe I'll play e4. Because like this bishop isn't doing a whole lot, but if I can trade some of these pawns off, then it could become more um, more active. So I'm kind of trying to think how can I how can I do that? Maybe even like a4, b4, b5 could be an idea. I have to watch out for for this. Um, so I'll go ahead and put the queen on c2, and maybe maybe I will do that plan next. Okay. So we'll go b4. Okay, so I'm just gonna, let's see. So I can't recapture this way because of this, so I'll play a3, take this way. So this was not good for him because now I have the open file. Um, so like rook here is what I would like to play. He could stop that with queen b8, but then I can consider bringing my queen over at some point. I, I can't right now. But just controlling this open file is, is really good. So I want to play d4 to like stop this bishop. The issue is it creates two holes right here that his knight could potentially go to. Most likely, he would go here and here. So the question is: is the is it worth it? Is you know making this bishop less effective worth giving him that hole for the, the knight? I think it is because I could even just move this back, trade it off, and then have a knight against the bishop in a somewhat closed position, which is probably pretty good. This bishop's not really doing anything anyway right now, and so I would be happy to trade it for the knight. So because of that, I think I will play d4. And so trying to, to kind of, you know, stop some of this. Yeah, and so he's going to go for that. Now I could even go there. Let's see. Do I want to do that? Bring my knight over this way? Or it's probably more simple to just play here and go this way. Let's see. So it's pretty clear he wants to go there. I can't go here right now, this pawn's hanging. So I have to go this way to get there, maybe? That looks like the spot for my, for my knight, though. So one, two, three, looks like a good plan. I've still got control of the file, that's a good thing. His bishop is not doing anything. I, I would love to trade my bishop for his knight if he goes there. Um, I mean, eventually I don't have to trade it right away. Yeah, so that looks like a good plan. Um, I'll go here. And I, the reason I'm going here instead of like here is because I don't want to let him trade his bishop for my knight because this is a closed off position mostly. I think my knight's going to be better. And so for that reason, I'd like to keep it. I have to be careful here. There's a little tactic, takes, takes, and then he can take here and then take the rook. So I could play e3 to stop that. I could trade immediately, but then after he takes, my knight is not going to be able to go to where I want it to go to. I can still get there eventually. Just gonna have to do a whole lot of maneuvering, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. So e3 stops that tactic. 
and then I can go knight here and then take the knight later. Although, if I don't take it now, he could come here and he could still play bishop f1. He can do the same thing, bishop f8 to control that square. Hmm. I'll just play e3 to go ahead and uh, remove any threats here, uh, remove any tactics, you know, like him sacrificing here, like I said. And if he goes here, I'll, I'll, I'll see what to do at that point. Um, okay. I don't know what that's all about. I don't think he's going to sacrifice here. If he did, I wouldn't really care. Um... Okay, so I'm thinking knight d3 and then trade and then move the knight in. I could take it right away, but let's go with knight d3. Let me just check. Takes, takes, takes. Queen f2. Rook takes. Takes, takes. A lot of pawns. That's actually that's actually a lot of pawns for his knight. Three pawns for a knight. Um, it's probably not enough, but you know maybe I don't even want to allow that. Let's see. Takes takes. Do I have any other ways to pr to protect that pawn? Yeah, he's actually going to get like four pawns for it. I'm going to get one, but... And that's going to fall. Yeah, I don't want to let him do that, actually. Now that I'm looking at it. So, I will take it. I'll just get rid of the knight, so I don't have to deal with that. It's going to be annoying, because I, I wanted to go there, but it's fine. Uh, in these, like, closed-off positions, you have more time to maneuver pieces. And so, it's, it's different than if it was, like, a tactical wide-open position. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I don't think his rook does anything there, right? Because if he ever plays here, I'm going to take it. Now he can play that. But... I think I'm going to get some pressure now. Maybe along this back rank. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put the rook there. And the idea is maybe I'll bring the queen in um, at some point. This knight definitely needs to get involved, so I'm going to bring that. Now I have the threat to go there. Okay, so he stops that. Um, but there's weaknesses along the queen side here, so I'm going to bring the queen over. And start preparing things like this. Try to get control of the seventh rank. He could attack my king if he plays like g5, f4. Problem is, it takes quite a bit of time. One, two, and then he has a threat. But even then, I can just take it and take with the knight, and he's going to have to, like, sacrifice to be able to get through, so. Wow. Okay, rook sacrifice. So, I mean, the only concern here is, like, is there going to be a perpetual check? So, takes, takes, king over. Like, takes or check. I could block with the knight. Most likely, my knight's going to be able to defend pretty, pretty nicely. And then I can bring the queen back over and come help defend um, since I'm going to be winning a rook. So it looks fine. I'll just do that. Bring the king over. Now, if the bishop was like somewhere else that it could be involved, it'd be a different story. But because the bishop can't really help, I'm um, not too worried. All right, so I'm going to go here. And the goal, like I said, is to just avoid getting checked continually. So I'm going to block with the knight. And the knight controls the square, so he can't put me in check anymore. 
And now I'll just bring my queen probably back and over. Uh, depending on what he does, I could take this too, but we'll see what he does. But most likely it's going to be like here. Um, okay, I think I'm just going to take that. Because I don't want to let him like push here, so I'll just take it. Alright, so there's a check here. He wants to take that, I don't really care. I do want to bring my queen back, I believe, to help defend. So let's go to here. And at this point, like my plans have changed because I won the rook, so now I'm I'm not worried about taking these pawns, I'm just worried about like getting out of check. So I'm gonna put the queen uh, on a place where it can stop the checks and, and if I can force the queen trade it's it's an easy game then the rook's gonna just take all the pawns right so that's kind of the plan okay so I'm gonna bring the rook over and I'll be able to go here and create this battery and then I can start like putting some pressure on the seventh rank. I'm gonna go a little faster so I don't run out of time because there's still quite a bit, still quite a bit of play left. Even though I have a rook, it's not that easy to breakthrough because of my king position and it's it might not be that easy to force a queen trade either so now I have this threat if he doesn't see that okay let's go here so trading would be great he doesn't trade, he's got to watch out for that. Yeah, that's just checkmate. So, one thing that I'll, I want to mention after this game, you saw how in the previous game, I, I blundered the mouse slip and just lost, right? And in this game, he played, like, pretty well for most of the game. There was just that questionable rook sacrifice that really cost him the game in this, you know, blunder at the end here. But other than that, like, you know, 1400 and I'm 21, 2200. Um, so the, the point is going from 1400 to 2200, you know, it's, it's a lot of small things and it's like one or two mistakes will determine the outcome of the game. That's something that I noticed in my career. Like once I hit 14, 1500, I realized that like, man, I'm playing against these like 2000 rated players and I feel like I'm sticking with it, but I always throw the game away at one point. Like one random move just cost me the game. And so what you'll find is like 2200 players usually don't ever make that one mistake. 1400 players, they do, right? And so just having like extreme caution when you play games. If you're at 1400, having extreme caution to like, okay, this is gonna be the game where I don't make that single mistake that I you know, usually sometimes make. And it's obviously easier to say that than to do that, but that's a huge thing. Of like, if you wanna improve, you have to really, really, really stop making those like mistakes, whatever that might be. So anyway, um, rant's over, I'll play one more game. All right, we got another game. We're black. So if you want to play the King's Indian defense against e4, I think you got to play d6 first. And then play knight f6 and follow through with, you know, the normal moves after that. Okay, well, I'm going to take that to free pawn, so I'm just going to take it. But if he would have played like something like knight c3, then I could have just continued with, you know, the plan. So that's what I'll do now. OK. 
Okay, um, I guess the, just retreat is the move. Alright, it's castle. And I'm gonna bring the bishop out. I just I don't really know how to play leaving it back there. It just makes more sense to me to uh, bring it out, trade it off, and um, let's see if I play e5 now. Then I have ideas of playing that. Let's bring the knight out first. Let's put the knight here. I'm gonna play e5 next. Okay, queen b1. I don't think I care too much about that, so I'm just going to go ahead and break uh, open the center now. And I know, like, you can play knight c6, you can play knight d7, and both support e5. If you want to play c5, obviously the knight has to go to, to here. I don't really know the theory on why, like, when you should do one or the other, so... Can't really help you there. That looks like a free pawn to me. Um, I don't see anything protecting it. Okay. So I'll just bring this knight back. Or I could just bring my queen up, actually. Maybe I'll do that instead. Yeah, I'll just do that. I don't want to put myself into a pin for no reason. It's not really a big deal, because I could play f6 if I needed to, but... I want to connect my rooks anyway, so it seems like a smart thing. Looks like, okay, so I could take it, I could sacrifice it, I could go back here or here. I guess I will, hmm, I guess I'll just keep the bishop. General rule says don't give up a bishop for a knight for no good reason. I didn't really have a good reason to take that. Hmm. So I think I just want to chase the knight away and gain some space and tempo. So let's just do that. I can play maybe e4 next. Or even f4 and try to trap this bishop with like h6 and g5. Yeah, so now I'm definitely going to do that plan, I think. Here, attacks the knight. He's got to move, let's say there. Then h6, bishop's trapped, has to go back g5. And it wins a piece. Now he can sacrifice, but it's fine as long as I don't randomly mouse slip. We will be good, so I will do that and win the piece. So, h6, bishop's going to be trapped. And like, yeah, there's a, you know, battery here, but it's, it's the wrong way. If this was switched around with the queen first, I would be much more concerned. But because it's the bishop uh, in front of the queen, it's not a big deal. We're going to be able to defend for sure. So, um, bishop f5 looks like an easy way to deal with that. If he takes, I can just trade. Mm, this is 
No, we can't do that. There's queens hanging. I was going to say that. All right, that's fine. Probably not going to take it. Maybe you will. I don't know. Okay. So I'm looking now. I'm seeing this is attacked, only defended by the knight. So if I play here and chase it away, then I can take this. And I have the bonus. It defends my knight at the same time. So that looks like a really good move. I don't see any moves for him. Let's do it. That's the idea. Wow, that's a move. Um, G4. Hmm. It's a good idea. Um, chase the queen away to a bad square and then take my knight. I guess I just have to take it. I don't really see anything else. Because otherwise I'm losing this, this knight, which I don't want to do, right? So I'll just take that. Okay, so there's a, a knight. I'm just taking it. There's this move too. I didn't even see that. Now maybe is the time. He's got check. I could block. I could take this. What else can I do? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Oh, that's dropping in a knight. All right, let's not let's not give back my pieces. Yeah, I guess we just go here. I'm expecting check. I could even just move my king over. Or queen d5. Yeah, queen d5 is probably better. Try to trade queens. All right, so that looks that looks good. Because it's somewhat forced because of the fork. He pretty much has to put me in check if he doesn't want to lose the rook. Then I can play queen d5, and again, I'm going to still have like two threats, which is probably going to force the queen trade, which is what I want, because, I mean, I don't know, his king's kind of actually open, so maybe I don't want to trade queens because of this. But trading queens simplifies things. So let's see, let's say I play d5, and he plays like g4. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play here and simplify it. Just make it easy. Now we just trade pieces and capture these, get a queen. So overall, I think the uh, King's Indian did pretty well. That one game, obviously the mouse slip, you know, we lost, but we were completely winning. We were up two pieces at that point um, and, and should have won easily. So yeah, I think, you know, King's Indian seems like a solid opening. I don't really, like I said, have a lot of experience. And so, yeah, I don't know. Hope you learned something from this video. Learned how to lose 30 points because you can't use a mouse. That's what you learned from this one. I'm still a little bitter about that. I'm going to come down here and try to checkmate him. I think we have enough pieces to do it. The knights can come in. Maybe the bishop at some point. Looks pretty Looks pretty good. Whoa. Like this. Like this. Like this. I'm having a hard time tonight. 
drawing arrows and moving pieces to the right squares. That's how I see checkmate happening, something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep going with the uh, checkmate plan. So let's see, here, takes, here, maybe he takes, maybe he puts me in check, and then boom, boom. That could work, could work. Let's see, is there any other way to do it? No, I think that's probably good. So I'm gonna go there. It's kind of in a mating net, right, because all these are taken away. You just gotta get, yep, all right. So I'm gonna go here. He might go there, but I can play bishop f8. It's not a big deal, his rook is completely out of the game. And then we're gonna go for the checkmate. So it's too bad that this knight is here. I could just immediately do it, right? All right, um, I could go here too, but this looks better because it controls more squares closer to the king. Yeah, so I'm gonna go there. I'm expecting one of these two moves. I don't really care about either of them because I'm just gonna go here. Checkmate. He might have thought that was checkmate because it was almost checkmate, but I don't know. I don't think he can stop mate now. Like, he could move that there or there. Well, yeah, because I have two checkmate threats, don't I? Hmm. That's one. He stopped that one, but then there's this one, which he didn't stop, so I'll do that. It's kind of a cool little checkmate. The knight's coming in. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. All right, guys. I uh, hope you learned something from those games. Uh, the game that we lost, like I said, King's Indian defense was great. We were up two pieces. Uh, if I didn't mouse slip the rook to f8 randomly, I think we were fine. So solid opening. I kind of liked it. Um, yeah. Anyway. I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.